thank you very much. Uh, um, I'm 50 years old. I'm uh, married uh, to Tessa. I have two daughters, three bonus childs, and two bonus grandchildren, and a third one on his way. So standing in front of all uh, you women, I, I really feel alive. <laughs> I've been working in the cruise industry with environmental sustainability in, in 20 years. And just looking at the situation, of course, this is the, the scary part. My, my daughter turned 18. By 2050, you know, she will uh, be perhaps facing a situation where all the coral reefs are, are dead from acidification. And there will be more plastic, as said earlier today, in the ocean than, than fish. And scientists the other week found, Austrian scientists found, plastic in, in human feces. So we see it so clearly now, the value of cleaner oceans. And my first point is that environmental sustainability will be our main barrier for growth. Here's the clicker. The cruise industry has tripled in size the latest 20 years. It's said that it's one of the three most profitable industries in the world, and the only one being legal. <laughs> Last year, it was 27 million people going cruising, and the forward growth target is to, to be 40 million on cruise by 2030. We deliver environmental technology to prevent pollution to sea. We do that in the cruise industry, and we also do that in the aquaculture industries. And help these industries become more environmentally sustainable. We are enhancing, with our technology, SGG 14, life below water, protecting that life. With our innovations to improve sustainability of sea traffic, we, we are also enhancing SGG 9. What is a cruise ship for us? If you look at an average uh, 125,000 gross tonnage ship carrying 4,000 people, it will discharge or accumulate 100 tons of backwater sewage, 1,000 tons a day gray water, 10 tons of 10 cubics of, of food waste, 25 cubics per day of garbage or, you know, five tons. Fuel oil consumption, 56 tons a day. And CO2 emissions from that, and also burning the, the waste, is around 190 tons a day. Comparing that with, it, somebody said that, you know, we are all cruise passengers on this world. Uh, the average per heart beating on board a ship would be around 15 to 17 tons of CO2 emissions per, per year. Comparing that to, to Norway, Norwegians, we're around 10 tons per, per, per person a year of CO2 emissions. In Sweden, and my wife is giving me a hard time because she's Swedish, uh, there are less than five tons per person, CO2 per, per year. And that's because, of course, the oil and gas production in Norway. But it means that the cruise industry is around 50 to 70% more carbon emissions per, per person a year. It's not that bad. We all have to do something. And especially in Norway, we are big producers of CO2 emissions. And on top of that, we're exporting oil and gas and have other countries burn it. And they're not allowed to come back to Norway to burn that oil and gas. Scansion, we have equipped 100, more than 100 cruise ships over the years, delivered our environmental technology to 22 cruise liners. And uh, Daniel, we are the we are actually equipping your ships being built in Norway with the most advanced systems. So these ships can, uh, 
can process all the black and gray water to the highest standard to date, also removing the nutrients. So that ship can, can operate in the future in the Baltic Sea as well. But that means that we have a market share of 33% and our forward order book is, is containing this type of technology to, to 30 ships. We help clients improve environmental sustainability. And we see now that there's a competition in this game. And one example is, is Richard Branson, who I met a couple of times. And he's actually pushing us as a company. We're, we're installing environmental technology on his new builds uh, for the Virgin Voyages. But he's actually using ScanShip to substantiate his environmental ambitions and new technology that we are these days innovating. What we're doing is that we are using garbage waste on board ships to convert that into energy that will replace fossil fuels and we will capture carbon. So just that this technology by, by using all the waste generated on the ship, we will be able to, to reduce 5% of the fuel oil consumption and we will be able to reduce up to 10% of the CO2 emissions. And that's a good step in the direction of the 50% reduction that the, the, the industry is, is aiming at. And this, this technology, we're, we're, I'm holding a speech tomorrow because we're awarded uh, a prize in, in Oslo at uh, Storebrand, a large Scandinavian insurance company. Uh, for the, uh, the, the year, this year's Handshake Award, or Årets Håndtrykk, because of the recognition we are getting from turning a waste and a problem into a solution that will help decarbonizing the cruise industry. Iron Marple regulations is considered a minimum. Uh, in, the, in the Arctic today you can discharge grey water, Grey water is actually unregulated worldwide. Uh, black water, sewage, in, in, in practical, you can discharge that uh, close to the ice shelf. There's no, nothing stopping you from that. The same, there are, of course, some limitations on food waste and more and more limitations on, on garbage and, and plastic discharge. And there is an initiative this week in the IMO for, for preventing marine littering. And, and that is also a backdoor into a possibility to, to regulate grey water for the first time. But there had to be a woman. There really had to be a woman. That made a change in the cruise industry 18 years ago. And it was Lisa Mitkowski, who was the, uh, the Alaskan senator in, in, in Washington, D.C. Her father was, was the governor. Of, of Alaska, and they made strict regulations that for a cruise ship to enter the fjords of Alaska, they had to be equipped with very advanced environmental technology, you know, for by far exceeding the IMO regulations. And because of that and the legacy, most of the cruise ships today are being equipped with, with this type of technology. So political leadership, we need leadership to snowball implementation of environmental technology. I, I had an opportunity to meet uh, Arna Solberg, this, the Prime Minister of, of, of Norway, because we're looking at enforcing new regulations along the coastline of Norway. And did you know that most of the Norwegian coastline and Svalbard is not even ratifying IMO Marple regulations? You're allowed operating a cruise ship along the Norwegian coastline. You're allowed to discharge untreated sewage 300 meters from shore. No regulations on, on scrubber water. So we're not even complying with IMO regulations. So we said that this is a unique opportunity because next year Norway is hosting a world Ocean Conference, and this is a huge opportunity to enforce new sustainable regulations along the Norwegian coastline. That 
shows political leaderships that eventually will snowball and, and have an influence other places around the world. But there's a good story. Cruz, Donald, even if you were sort of painting a, a bit more uh, skeptic picture, the, the cruise industry has been front runners for years. Even though there's no regulations in the IMO, 53% of all the cruise ships today, the existing fleet, are treating, are pr processing all the gray and waste and black water on board. And all 100% of the new builds coming out in the next years will have this type of technology. Nothing, no push from, no push from, from, uh, from IMO Marple. And 34% of new ships being built will be equipped with LNG. So the cruise industry is actually, they have to get credit for, 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 for being front runners and uh, for, for, for the, the entire marine industry. Thank you very much.